Uh, when when we first started this, we had the, reason, the river stone. And every every show, every show I worked, a guy would say, "Man, I love this river stone. I'm buying one. I just got a brand new three quarter ton diesel." And then you want to throw up because you can't tow it. And so after a few years of that, we made a three quarter ton that's called reserves. And now to make it three quarter ton pullable, the bigger ones we eliminated the slide. Then we came out with 3410, which is no more. The 3670 is no more. Okay. Again, it's smaller and lighter. But to make it even lighter, because it's the size is on the edge. Okay, so to make it lighter. Riverstone dual pane windows are standard. The reserve dual pane windows are an option because they're heavy. The Riverstone washer and dryer standard reserve that's an option because it's heavy. The Riverstone the dishwasher standard the reserve it's an option because it's heavy. Now there's one other thing that doesn't have anything to do with weight. Why do you think the guy bought a three-quarter ton rather than a one ton? Okay. Price. So the Riverstone has a trim all water heater standard. The reserve, it's a 12-gallon gas electric. The trim is an option. Just that's just dollars and cents. Yes. Now the construction is the same. You won't notice the difference looking at a reserve or a river stone unless you go to the back. The river stone has a rear molded gap. The reserve does. It's 250 pounds. So it came off. But that's it. That's the only thing you'll see. It's the only difference you'll see is. be a trailer and pen box. Lippert bought it and they changed the name. It's the same trailer and pen box in the house as Kurt. They bought Kurt and they put Kurt's name on here. I don't know why. But the same but it's the same pitch as a trailer and pen box. Airbag, shock absorber. That's an option. I bring it in on everything. Everybody wants it. The standard pitch, if somebody wants to know, that's the standard hitch on the river stone. Roto plus ten dots is a rubber pad. That's the standard hitch here. This is the option. On the reserve, that Roto plus ten box is an option. That's the upgrade. Uh, the standard ten box is a standard ten box, just like that sandpiper. That sandpiper right down there, that's the pen box you would have here standard. But I'm I bring that in on everything because everyone wants to upgrade their pen box. Everything has 240 pound LP tank Here you can see the, the chassis. It's a 12 inch I beam chassis. The important thing is an I beam maintains the camber better than a box frame. You tell that to a, to a retail customer, they don't have any idea what camber is. And so, what I tell them, the, the chassis is built like a leaf spring. The trailer goes down the road twisting and flexing, but it doesn't do this. The camber keeps it from doing this. I beam maintains camber better than a box spring. Now, the reason you do, if you ever go against go up against DRV mobile suites, mm -hmm. use a box spring. It's not a strong 
as the I beam. So they use a 15 inch box frame where we use a 12 inch I beam. It's lighter and it's stronger. But when you drop the frame, you're still, you go for the 12. Well, we don't drop the frame. It's stacking. This 12 inch frame is all the way to here. Okay. And it's stacked on top of the inch frame. From here to there is eight inch. The stress point of the goose neck is right here. This is on the Riverstone only. Aluminum though, right? This is steel. No, but, but, but the header that you're talking about here, is that aluminum? No, it's steel. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. Now, On the reserve, you're not going to have the rear cap. That's the only difference you're going to see between the reserve and the river stone. You get a bike rack. It's not a, it's not a hitch. It's for a bike rack. It's got 300 pound capacity. Quite often people say, well, can I pull my motorcycle trailer behind there? Can I pull my boat behind there? Golf carts, I see it. No. No, you can't because you're over length. It's against the law. DOT will pull them over and they'll have to drop it. Cord reel here. It's a power reel for a power cord. Just push a button and it rolls it up. That's on everything. Reserve and reserve. We might now have a water filter. And uh, your cable, your satellite, the outside shower, it's all right there. The bypass valves. Is heating water tank holding tanks. They get where they're going, the furnace is going to heat that. 40,000 BTUs. And I, I pitched these together. This is 40,000 BTUs. The Truma water heater, 60,000 BTUs. This is instant, instant high. And the reason it's instant high. It's not tankless. It has a gallon and a half tank. This gallon and a half is always 80 degrees. This, this keeps maintains 80 degrees. But it doesn't take much gas to heat a gallon and a half. Now, the reserve is a 12 gallon gas electric water heater. It takes a lot of gas to maintain that. This, that's that's LP only. No, no electric. All right. no. But that's always 80 degrees, so when they turn their water on, it only has to go from 80 to 115, not 55 to 115. So it's, it's instant hot right now. And being 60,000 BTUs, that's why I pitch it with the furnace. Remember the furnace is 40,000 BTUs heating this whole thing? This is 60,000 BTUs. So you have instant hot water right now. Back there. And I see it's, it's on, which is good. Because you have a solar panel that's keeping that battery charge. 
when we go inside, if that's not on, flip that on. Because when we go inside, we're gonna do, you see all the indirect lighting. With that shut off, you can't sell the indirect lighting. Plus the bedroom can't be dark. Okay, four six volt batteries. The reason I say that is six volt battery is a half inch bigger than a 12 volt battery. The other reason is, the guy says, my brother told me I need four six volt batteries. He doesn't, but his brother said he did. So you could have selling four six volt batteries. Now, I used to know my batteries, and I did. I used to know my batteries. The last three years, there's so many new batteries out there. It's kind of like the satellite dish. You know, everybody wants a different satellite dish. So we get rid of our satellite dish. You sell them your satellite dish, whatever you want to sell them. Now, you have aluminum trusses on 16 inch centers, aluminum studs on 16 inch centers, aluminum floor joists on 16 inch centers. It's aluminum all the way around. If, um, if they're <coughs> looking at um, a Jayco, they're looking at a Grand Design, they're wooden rim trusses. And, and they don't and they don't tell people that they're wooden roof trusses. They'll, they'll say, hey, we have an aluminum frame here. But they don't say we got wooden trusses. This is aluminum all the way around. Then on the roof, above those roof trusses is half inch plywood. For most fifth wheels are 3 8 OSB, maybe half inch OSB, which is real flexible. Half inch plywood, it's real rigid. We can all get up there and walk around. Yeah, it's a strong, it's just like the floor. Now above the plywood is, um, Diflex. Sorry, I couldn't, I just couldn't spit it out. It's a Diflex roof, which is made by Dicor, which makes TPO. Now, when I was a kid, roofs were aluminum. Expansion and contraction, they always leaked. They had the roof coat and roof every year, had to. In the late 80s, they came out with the rubber, which was, uh, it was an absolute miracle because the rubber roof caulk melted into the rubber roof. You didn't have to re, re caulk it. The only thing you ever had to do was touch up any of the caulk that shrunk from the sun. Just touch it up, that's all you had to do. The bad thing about rubber roofs, it's a black rubber with a white talc. And after 10 years, that talc dissipates. Now you got a black roof. So Dicor came out with TPO, which is a rubber vinyl blend. And so you, you had the color, the same color all the way through. They didn't have to use a talc. There was a failure. The rubber roof cloth wouldn't adhere to TPO. And to overcome it, Dicor came out with a solvent. At the factory, they have to prep the roof with the solvent before they caulk it. If they don't prep it, it's not going to stick. Your customer goes to touch up the roof because it's going to shrink. They need, they need to touch up any voids from the sun. But they have to get that solvent from you and the caulk. They got to clean it with that solvent before they caulk it, where it's not going to stick. If they got a new guy on the line when they're building this and he doesn't prep it right, guess what's not going to stick to the roof? That was the failure of TPO. The factories have to make sure they got a guy that knows how to prep it. The customer has to know he's got to prep it before he talks it. Dicor came out with this, Diflex. It's expensive. It's a better blend. We don't have to prep it. Your customer wants to touch up any voids, just soap and water, let it dry, talk. We don't have to worry about a new guy in the line not knowing how to prep it. it it's a good, good roof, easy to maintain, but it's expensive. But it's a Diflex roof. What's the warranty? Twelve years. Twelve years. Yeah. And what I failed to do that I told you guys to do. 
coming here. Um, they're, they're going out for dinner or whatever. They can just hit all off. Get the third air conditioner guy wants a heat pump. There's an option for a bedroom heat pump. 